All right, so we have an example problem where a ball is kicked from the ground with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second, 35 degrees above the horizontal. The ball strikes a wall that is horizontally two meters away from the kicker. At what distance above the ground does the ball strike the wall? All right, so we know what V initial is, 10 meters per second, and we know theta is 35 degrees above the horizontal. All right. So, let's see, we're going to kick our ball, and it's going to come over here, and it's going to strike a wall. And we know horizontally, or delta x, the ball is traveling two meters. And we want to know over here what delta y is, so how high above the surface is the ball when it strikes the wall. Alright, so if we look through our equations for the y directions that have delta y, we have delta y is equal to the initial sine of theta t plus one half a of y t squared. We have v final in the y squared equals v initial sine theta squared plus two a of y delta y, and then we have delta y is equal to one half v y final plus v i sine theta times t. And we run into some problems initially because in our first equation here, there is time. And this equation here, we have the final, which we don't know. And remember, it's not zero. We always exit the problem just before it hits the object, in this case, a wall. And this one has both the final and time, so that's doubly a problem. All right, so it looks like we either need to find v final in the y, or we need to find time. And the way we're going to overcome this issue is by remembering the fact that the object travels from its initial position to its final position along a parabolic path. Meaning it's not traveling delta x and then delta y, it's traveling along this parabolic path, keeping an xy pair, or position pair, the whole way through that motion. So that xy position pair corresponds to a particular time. So if we can find the time when x is equal to zero, or x is equal to two meters, we could find then the time when our delta y is. Because this, this position here is going to be delta y two meters. So if we find the time at the x value, we can then use that time to find the y value. Which is exactly what I've done up here. I plugged in the two meters for delta x, I have 10 meters per second, times the cosine of 35, and I've solved for t, which is 0.244 seconds. I've then taken my first equation I've written down, down here, delta y equals vi sine theta t, plus one half a of y t squared. I plugged in 10 meters per second for v initials, taking times sine of theta times 0.244 seconds, plus one half times a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Acceleration is going to be the negative 9.8 meters per second squared because we're flying through the air, we're ignoring air resistance. And we're gonna take that times 0.244 seconds squared. And it gives me a delta y of 1.1 meters. So our object is gonna be 1.1 meters above the surface.